Hi everybody, I just wanted to uh, post a, a video just giving you some advice and some guidelines about the upcoming ex exam and to encourage you to uh, be prepared for the exam by this Friday so, so you can earn uh, the extra credit and uh, make sure that you're earning the minimum score on it so you want to be prepared for it which is a 75% or higher. Um, so to prepare for this, um, and hopefully you've been doing some of this to a certain degree, but I just want to make sure to reiterate some of the things I went over in the orientation. Let's go to the syllabus, make sure you understand the structure of the exam, what's going to be on it. So um, there will be five identifications. Um, and you get those identifications from the, the study guide that's available in Unit 1 from Blackboard. And there will be two essays that will be randomly selected, randomly selected from the lectures, essays from Unit 1. So make sure you understand that. Um, so you have to have your lecture essays prepared ahead of time. Um, so when the essays that are randomly selected come up for the exams and you type in the little window that's provided, um, you're not starting from scratch. Now, one of, let's go over just a couple of things too with the identifications. So please take note of this right here. Um, if you haven't printed this out and really read this through, really take some time to read through it right now. Let's read through it together. Explain the pertinent information such as who, what, where, when, why, and how. Um, and pertinent background information. You don't have to write down little who and what's and where's. You don't have to use those words specifically, but that's just some guidelines basically telling you to just expand on the basic facts of the identification. So if we're looking at the identification, let's bring up the IDs. Going into Unit 1, printing the study I got, click there, and this opens up. So let's say Jamestown is selected randomly from this list of identifications uh, for your exam. You're going to want to, first and foremost, probably list the year that it um, was founded and the purpose of this colony and who exactly uh, founded the colony. Uh, so those are kind of the basic facts of it. And then you might want to expand a little bit further in, in talking about uh, its development. So just don't talk about its founding, but you might want to bring out what happened, for instance, in 1619. And if you don't know what happened in 1619, that's definitely part of the lecture material that's available um, for uh, within the development of slavery. And then you might want to talk about how slavery is going to develop within Jamestown and talk a little bit more about that. And that gets into the significance of Jamestown. And so through all of that, um, you're going to have a, you're going to be shooting for a good five to six sentences a piece. So really take note on that, right? Um, and what you really want to make sure you get is the historical significance. So this means that somewhere in your um, response, you should establish historical context. It's, just, it's very important to situate the ID in time, which historically, when is it happening? If so, if you can relate it to other things that are happening in the class, um, that will be very helpful to explain your understanding of that particular ID and whatever it is. Um, and don't hesitate to bring in other identifications uh, in, into your explanation. So we've got Jamestown right here. Let's look in here. You can talk about white identity um, and bring that into your discussion um, with Jamestown as well. Um, definitely you want to touch on Bacon's Rebellion within your identification on Jamestown. Right? And so if you're writing identifications that are one sentence, maybe two, that's an indication that you want to dig a little bit deeper on these things. And you want it to come from the content of the course. Definitely draw from the reading as well. So if you find information from the reading that seems helpful to respond to these identifications, do that. Um, and I can tell which information is coming from the content of the course, since I'm the one who's uh, uploaded it in here and produced some of it and written some of it, and when students are getting it from Wikipedia.
right, or wherever, some blog. So please use the content of the course. Um, it will demonstrate that you are immersed within this course and are able to make the necessary connections of where we're going within this course, which is to learn the trajectory of U.S. history from the colonial era all the way to the Civil War. Uh, to reiterate on the um, lecture essays, let's go here real quick. I want to make sure you're clear on this as well. Again, every this is what you will see in the exam if you get this particular lecture essay. It'll ask you to discuss the age of expansion and conquest and its various stages of development. In your discussion, give examples of each phrase, blah, 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 and so on and so forth. So if the exam randomly picks this one, that's what you will see. Now your response needs to have all four, I think there's four learning objectives in this, yes a response to all four learning objectives if you want um, some sort of decent credit on that. So if you're getting a score that is 60 or 70, that me could mean a couple of things. It, it usually means you left out a learning objective, or if you did include all the learning objectives, they were scantily written, meaning that you wrote uh, maybe a paragraph per learning objective. And do write in learning in paragraphs. Don't just give me one huge paragraph. Uh, that includes all of the learning objectives. You can push return and put some space in between um, each paragraph. And so it's either you didn't include all the learning objectives, or if you did, you wrote one or two sentences per learning objective, or it was very a, a very general response. It didn't get into the specifics necessary for these responses here. Um, the other thing, too, if you're not doing this, if you haven't been doing this, like I told, uh, let you guys know with the orientation, make sure you're using index cards. It'll be helpful, especially during the exam. If you have um, each lecture, say, organized in, um, in these index cards, uh, it'll be much easier to refer to your notes while you're taking the exam rather than a whole bunch of notes that you might have taken. That's always the first step. That's an important step to take the notes. That helps you begin to open up the networks within your brain to become familiar with this content. Not to memorize it, but to become familiar with it. And the next step is to transfer your notes a little bit more succinctly, a little briefer, but not to leave stuff out, but just try to get a little um, more condensed into the, uh, into the index cards. Be one a way to kind of drill yourself periodically so you don't have to refer to your notes as much because it's a time test, right? And it will be a way for you, to, when you do have to refer to your notes, to quickly be able to do it rather than going through a notebook furiously trying to find out where something is that you know you wrote down but you can't find it at that certain point. All right, so yes, uh, basically what I'm saying is be organized before you click begin. And try to get this done by Friday. If not, don't kill yourself to do this. Um, I'll, I'll, I might uh, uh, give this opportunity again uh, for the next exam. So if you need a couple of days to prepare for it, do so. But I really encourage students not to wait until the day an exam is due. Um, a number of things can go wrong. And the, once it's due, it's due. You can't. I, I won't open it back up. OK, that's all I have for now. Hopefully that was helpful. Uh, do email me if you have any questions or concerns. If you want just to clarify some content, absolutely email me. Um, other than that, I will talk to you guys later. Bye.